Hello and very good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hello. Oh, yes, yes. Hello. Very good morning to all participants who just joined us. Welcome to uh, Vortex XR Labs uh, first webinar. So um, we have done webinars before. Uh, that's last year, but those are more to the introduction to uh, the equipment and. Uh, what we are doing in the, the Vortex XR Lab for the university. So today we are kicking off our special onboarding program, uh, starting with a webinar called XR and the Metaverse, which is an introduction. And I'm very proud and pleased to introduce to you is the Faisal Attar, who is the expert in VR. He's our XR specialist uh, working with us full time and he's also the manager uh, of the Vortex XR Lab and also the coordinator uh, of uh, the Vortex XR projects. So uh, a warm welcome to you, Mr. Faisal. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so there's a bit of a sound, sound test. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I would like to pass the floor now to uh, Mr. Faisal. So Faisal, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so good morning. Um, today we're going to talk about the XR and the metaverse and introduction. So there are a few things that we're going to talk about. Um, firstly, basically like, I think like some of you have or might not have heard about XR per se might have heard about VR or AR or MR, whatever that now, now it's XR. What is it, the iPhone XR or whatnot? Okay, so we're gonna talk a bit about that. And we're gonna talk about like the, the people who are in the industry, the, the people, uh, XR and, and all of it. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the metaverse. Um, I, I'm sure some of you already have kind of heard about it, uh, but have like big ideas or maybe have a concrete idea of what it actually is. I'm just gonna shed a bit more light about that. And uh, even the current and the future state of the metaverse. And lastly, we're gonna talk about like the why of metaverse. Like why, why should you care? Why is it important? Is it inevitable? Is it all, all those stuff? But first and foremost, before we proceed, just a bit about me. I think like we're, uh, I'm not really, I'm, I'm kind of like new here, so. I want to like introduce a bit about me myself. So my name is Faisal Athar bin Muhammad Fazil. Um, outside when I was studying, I was known as Kasim. So that's my Instagram later on. I work as the XR specialist and basically manager of Vortex Lab here. I am an XR enthusiast. I have been working and propagating VR, AR, MR for the longest of times since I studied VR back in 2005. I have a family of, uh, with a wife and two cats, and I'm a fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling in general. So I'll talk about like wrestling or not VR. Um, we can have a chat later, later on on that. <laughs> so to begin, so what is XR, right? So XR in a nutshell is stands for extended reality. So extended reality is basically an umbrella term for AR, VR, MR. So it all everything within the virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality all falls under extended reality. Everything that's basically beyond our current reality, that's extended. You are extending our we are extending our our existing reality per se. So be it augmenting items on top of it, be it like going into an alternate universe reality and whatnot, be it mixing both augmented and virtual reality, that's basically all falls under XR. So whenever somebody talks, um, they are into the XR business, basically they doesn't, it can mean one of these things. It basically means like either or either one of these or they are working on all of these. So at this day and age, you can't really rely on just like one uh, reality per se, because nowadays we are moving towards kind of like interchangeable, which that's basically comes to the MR term for us. So we're going to go bit a bit on each of these realities and what does it actually mean. So virtual reality 
it's kind of straightforward. I'm going to start with virtual reality because it's kind of straightforward, obviously, because it's you are in an alternate reality. You are in something artificial. You are in a, in a basically a simulation of something. So as long as you are immersed, fully immersed in the whole world of different reality per se, that's virtual reality, right? So there's a lot of usage usages for it and purposes for it, but mainly for kind of like we're more familiar with like uh, games, entertainment, uh, storytelling, films, and whatnot within VR platform. Basically, you are immersed in a whole different world altogether. So that is basically um, why VR is such a how should I say easy thing to kind of like understand because it's kind of like very straightforward. Like this image here of Vader Immoral is one of the games uh, in the Oculus market where you basically be an apprentice of Vader if you're a fan of Star Wars. So how do we access VR? There are multiple ways, usually utilizing a VR headset such as the Oculus Quest 2, uh, Vive Pro or even like PSVR. Uh, but all of these things have this uh, the, the same thing in common, which basically they totally immerse yourself within um, uh, an alternate reality. Because VR technically is basically just, should I say this, kind of like tricking your senses to believing what you see is real. That's basically it. It's just tricking your eyes, tricking your ears, and then with controllers with vibration, it, ha it uh, tricks your uh, senses to thinking that whatever you are feeling is real. So when all of that is basically there, you are totally immersed within this whole new reality. And then adding on to other senses such as smell, such as taste and whatnot, these uh, in the later, later future, uh, newer technologies are trying to incorporate these other senses to be tricked as well, so that you would basically be totally immersed when you really smell you you smell what you see already and then what if like there's a virtual food or fruit that you can literally taste um, that in itself already um, really pushes pushes the boundary of what's what's real and what's not and then you are truly truly immersive think like the matrix basically if you're a fan of that movie that's basically it it pushes the question of like what is real anymore right so that, that's basically the the uncanny valley of vr which hopefully we will we'll get as close as possible but not exactly there yet <laughs> augmented reality then we're familiar with vr what is augmented reality what is ar so ar is basically augmenting reality around us so you are enhancing real life with overlays of information, you know, overlays of artifacts or like visual display and whatnot. So these kind of like, um, it's like basically a, an easier example is just to use like uh, the Google Street View or Pokemon Go per se. So whenever you see the real world, you are augmenting the Pokemon on top of the world or like you have direction using Google Map, using the camera so you can basically uh, navigate using your camera. So that is basically augmented reality. Think of basically like if I wanted to find an ATM, I have no idea where the ATM is. I just point my phone um, using a simple app. It would track where the ATM is based on the GPS and then basically it's going to just direct you there with an overlay information while you're holding your phone. So that's basically augmented reality. So there are a few devices as well to experience augmented reality. Um, the general consensus is mostly the, the mobile phones and tablets uh, because all of our phones, um, at the very least, like within the last past five years, are powerful enough for AR and even more than that. Uh, but there are also some de specific devices we call AR glasses, such as like the Google Glass 2 and the Epson Move Rio BT300. So these kind of like our glasses, I think like Apple is working on something like that as well. So it works as like your phone, basically you overlays information, but you're already wearing it in your head. So it eases the whole experience, so it becomes embedded within your lifestyle. So it does not... Um, feel like you are holding a gadget per se, whereas you are already wearing these things. So it feels like like another piece of clo uh, clothing or accessory, like your glasses or your hats and whatnot. 
So it becomes embedded, and that's like the whole idea of it um, soon when the technology becomes a lot more affordable and the technology becomes a lot more advanced, can be um, smooshed into like very small, small pieces, then we would ha actually see these kind of devices being part of our lifestyle instead of being like holding an external. And you do not see that as an, uh, as an external device anymore. You see it as part of a life, part of your accessory per se. So, when that happens, basically, we will be truly kind of like uh, verging into that, um, enhancing the real life. So enhancing how we live, you could say. And then what you then you would say, like, what is then what's mixed reality then? Mixed reality is technically AR. <laughs> technically, it is augmenting reality as well. You are augmenting the real world with overlaying information, but you have the AR has more depth understanding uh, where well, that's when the mixed reality kicks in. So compare it like Pokemon Go when before this, you can have the Pokemon uh, augment overlay on your screen, but it does not detect the surfaces ar around you. It does not detect the floor back then. Like nowadays, Pokemon Go can detect the floor. Um, and can detect surfaces. So when it does that, it's kind of like the realms into the realm of mixed reality. And then the, the next side of mixed reality is basically to blend AR and VR together. So you basically kind of like augments uh, the reality as well, but you are bringing the virtual world into the reality with context of the reality. Because like virtual reality per se, when you are immersed in it, when you wear the headset, you see this virtual world it does not relate at all with the actual world that you are living in. Let's say you have a table in front of you, you have a wall behind you, but when you put on the headset, you see yourself in front of a beach uh, with a birds chirping, you have a coconut tree, palm trees and whatnot. Um, the wall, you do not see the wall, you do not see the table because it has no contact with the reality, right? So that is total virtual reality. But mixed reality would have that context as well. You would see yourself in a virtual environment, but that virtual environment would detect your actual immediate surroundings. So you can be on a beach with your table, with the wall in black, with, uh, the, uh, behind you, per se. So that is when you are mixing the actual reality and virtual reality. So that is basically what the idea of mixed reality is supposed to be. Uh, right now, what we have is basically these kind of like devices. Uh, it's kind of like marketed as uh, MR devices, such as the HoloLens and Magic Leap. Um, but in essence, they are still kind of like AR uh, based with surface tracking. But soon, basically, you would have, I think Facebook is working on something that's wanted to switch that, that you can switch from AR to VR discriminately. Even like there are developers working on the HoloLens that wants kind of like bring the virtual into the real world. Um, and they make it more seamless, we'll say. Excuse me. Okay, so I have a video to share, uh, basically how how HoloLens kind of like views uh, the, the things that I just mentioned just now. Mixed reality breaks down the barriers between physical and virtual realities. Let's see how we can alter realities across people, places, and objects. Here we have a real office populated with real things. Let's now adjust reality by adding virtual objects to this physical space. Notice how these the objects audio. are aware of the real surfaces in the office. Next, let's replace the real person with an avatar. This allows her to be present even though she is not physically in the room. Now let's adjust the environment itself and make it virtual. Notice how the virtual objects and avatar continue to persist. Finally, let's tie back this entire virtual scene to the original physical room. A subtle boundary grid can reveal real obstacles, making it safer to walk around this virtual environment. Mixed reality unlocks exciting new experiences that merge the physical and the virtual worlds. Mixed re So you can see here basically how I, I just mentioned, like you are bringing the virtual into the real world, but with context of the real world. So you are, you will not be banging your walls or like walking over your dog and whatnot. Um, 
that's the idea of mixed reality and that i think the future is coming really really soon it's already here technically it's not it's just a matter of like tweaking here and there just make it more uh, better and whatnot okay so sorry so that i hope that Part, that section is basically understand it, just kind of uh, establish what is XR per se. So I'm, I'm kind of, I, I do spend a bit more time on the XR part because that is kind of like more and more of my, my, my research back uh, for the past few years. I'm going to share as well, like who are the people and the industry within this particular industry. Um, the industry in itself, the XR industry, a lot of people think there's just games or like it's entertainment but there's a lot more to it especially into healthcare manufacturing and education there's a lot of people are actively actively utilizing xr uh, within all of these different different industries um, as we speak it's not just uh, research to see the potential anymore they are actively utilizing this especially in healthcare and manufacturing and education these are the top three industries i can see i've seen that um, XR has been thriving. There are other industries as well, um, slowly creeping in as well, especially like advertising or event management, virtual conferences and whatnot. But the main things are, these are kind of like the main drivers of the industry. Um, take it like some case studies, like there are, if you can search on xrhealthuk.org, there's like a whole article about like the growing value of XR in healthcare, how they utilize XR to help in therapy or like how to help um, basically to, to alleviate physical pain by bringing them into virtual reality, how they actually utilize AR to train doctors how to treat COVID patients, especially now since the COVID, um, it, it, it inadvertently kind of like pushes the XR development uh, technology to rapidly increase in speed where people are already uh, like stuck uh, remotely uh, with the travel restrictions. So they have to kind of like work around that. And then a lot of people like figure out a lot more solutions utilizing XR within these kind of industry, especially in healthcare. Even like in HR, VR has been utilized, utilized to train leaders on how to, teach, uh, how to train their staffs, how to do virtual onboarding, how to kind of like, um, there's a simulation on HR, how to fire people per se. So you have like a virtual character with power by AI that uh, acts like a employee that, and you have their files and you're supposed to fire them. And it, but it trains you on how to do that in real life. So you are dealing with this AI and he would basically respond to the information that you have. And then basically it's up to you to want to proceed or not. But basically that's still your job. So that's the harsh part of that. And then you kind of like that's you would kind of like simulate that situation within within VR. There's also why they use this for autism is basically not exactly how to treat autism per se, but how uh, caretakers deal with autism patients. So there was a VR application as well where you deal with an AI that uh, acts as a, the autism spectrum kit and you as a caretaker would have to kind of like deal with them. So it teaches you how to communicate with them, how to gain their uh, attention, how to kind of like calm them down. So all that knowledge going through these simulations can be applied in real life. And that research has been proven that it actually helps um, caretakers and doctors try to te uh, deal with um, within this situation. So these are just like very, very, very few um, uh, examples that I can share within our short time today. But if you just look within these um, links, basically there's a whole lot more within the industry. Um, companies as well, I, th these are just a few as well, companies that are actively working on XR solutions such as like Ministry XR, uh, Zero Density working on uh, XR production with broadcast elements. XR Associates, they basically do networking between XR companies. You have EDT, uh, Electronic Design Technology, and True XR, also content creation, content creators of XR. These are just some of them kind of like I 
personally know and work with within in our region. But there's a whole lot more actually out there um, with whole different different categories of virtual reality. Um, this is only just talking about VR. There's a lot more actually. Um, you have VR cinema content, cinema creation, publishing, discovery, enabling softwares, creation hardwares, consumption hardwares, environment creation like Unity and Unreal, enterprise, medical, VR, you name it. There's a whole bunch of like companies out there that are working on very, very, very part, different, different parts of virtual reality. And even as I say this, this was a data cumulative back in, to, back in 2018. Now, today is 2022. There's a whole lot more companies even out there working on even more works and on the whole spectrum where XR. So if as educators or like parents worry, like my, my child, my students, are they, they're going to have future around it. Trust me, they will have a future. They, 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 there's a lot of avenues they can actually apply. It's not just games, not just VR entertainment. It's not just that. There's a whole bunch of industry that actually actively utilizing XR technology, even here in Malaysia. It's just that it's not as uh, mainstream as people would think they are. Um, apart from the companies and industry, the, the, there's associations and communities that are actually help these uh, companies thrive as well, such as the AWE, Augmented World Expo, which just had just finished their event last week, which is the AWE USA 2022, uh, where over there in Santa Clara, Clara, where there's a lot of like awards and showcases of new technology. There's also South by Southwest, the XXSW, there's SIGGRAPH, there's also VRAR associations. So there's a whole lot of community out there that kind of really encourages more content creation, more development, and then they help each other on kind of like bring, uh, bring each other up so that get networking and business opportunities together. So this is already on the work as well. So if you are like, if you want to know more about works that have basically like work into different industries, different uh, fields and whatnot, you can just go to any of these communities and just go through um, their kind of like stakeholders or like people, their, their members and whatnot. So that covers the, the XR part. Is it sharing my screen? I think this the screen is still stuck, stuck at the community, right? Okay, so we're going to talk now about the metaverse. I think I hope like that that whole segment kind of like clears up like what's XR. Uh, if you have kind of like any question, we're gonna kind of we can, we have like a Q and A session at the end of it. But right now we're gonna jump into the metaverse. So what is the metaverse? So the metaverse, <laughs> I would say like uh, it is basically basically it is a network of 3D virtual worlds focused on social connection. That is literally basically it. It's not really like something really hard to conceptualize because it's not something new per se. Like the term metaverse already has been around since 1992 uh, by a science fiction novel Snow Crash as a portmanteau of meta and universe. So that idea of a virtual world that you can socially connect with has already been there already. Like if any of you have played like MMORPG games or MMO uh, kind of like environments or just massively multiplayer online games or environment, you know that you are already connected in a virtual world per se, socially hanging out with your friends, doing stuff, doing activities. Like I used to play Ragnarok online back in 2004 or five, and people were already trading there. People were getting married in VR, in, in, in Ragnarok. So who's to say that this thing has not been around? It's just that Zuckerberg basically kind of like coined the term Meta when they changed the company name Meta and then, oh, we're doing Metaverse. And then, then all of this, the sun, all of the stakeholders come like, oh, okay, we're doing Metaverse, we're doing Metaverse. <laughs> but since like basically this whole thing has been around for quite, for quite some time, but like now people are actively going into it. And then I think like we've familiar, we're familiar with the Metaverse in the media as well. Like obviously like the book Snow Crash, like, I think like, probably not not all of us like read it but or but the book has been around 
even like the movie like I mentioned just now, The Matrix, or even Ready Player One. That is basically just a glimpse of what a metaverse can be. A whole world where you can literally live into it, where socially act, you can be socially active, you can trade, you can play, you can uh, have relationships, uh, why not? It's just like how far into it that you want to go into that. Like the Matrix oh, yeah, no. literally put yourself inside of it and literally put yourself within this whole alternate reality, cut, cut yourself out from the actual reality. So that is the total extreme. That is what we call full dive VR. So it's basically it's the whole of your senses are already in VR. Nothing is connected with the virtual reality anymore. So. Believe me, when somebody, I say that the people are already working on something like that already. Ready Play Me is something like a more approachable. Basically, a lot of people go there and for games and whatnot. But uh, to be honest, like a lot of like these current metaverse people are working on, uh, they tend to go towards kind of like remote working, uh, I think. Um, why? Because like, that's kind of like the more in demand per se rather than just like playing games and entertainment has always been there people will find ways to entertain themselves but work has to be done one way or another people have to kind of find work and then this oh, kind of like extends to more different of works i'm sorry I've heard something. Oh. okay sorry I, i'll just continue <laughs> Somebody is not muting. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so that is basically metaverse in the media. There's a lot more examples out there, basically. But I want to share another video, just a short video of how, like Adobe, they envision how uh, they envision metaverse to bring say, those creations fully to life in an immersive. This part now creation for AR is very new Not so let's one. just take it step it's by step like how this is actually going to work this is kind of like a mixture of what the future holds of uh kind of like a mixture of ar and vr and kind of like then you are really like work living in the metaverse per se <laughs> Play music. Okay. There's been an update to your calendar. Show calendar. There's an accident ahead. Should I show you an alternate route? Yes. Show bio. Save to libraries. Oh, hey, Jordan. Hey, Rory. Yeah. I saw this on my right end. Might be cool. Climb half down. It seems that you're making lasagna. Should I turn on the oven? Yes, preheat oven to 400. Open preferences. <laughs> okay, so that basically gonna like how I would say when you know, like you are truly augmenting reality now. You are still living in the real world, but with information, with all of these data, you are gonna like enhancing the way you live, work, and play, and whatnot. So. That is basically the whole idea and goal of metaverse per se. What makes the metaverse altogether? Like there's a lot, it's it's a whole new technology per se, but there's a whole lot more, <coughs> sorry. 
it is there's a whole lot of things needs to happen between when the metaverse actually arrives per se like from the top part that we are experiencing it which is the the experience itself <coughs> i'm sorry which is the games esports theater shopping that's kind of like the top level the, the the first thing that you experience when you experience the metaverse you go inside there's like you the, the discovery part where there's like the social part there's rating the stores there's agents there's ad networks you go even more inside there's like the create the economy where people are designing metaverses they are creating markets they're creating commerce they're creating trade providing content go deeper into that there's the spatial computing which is basically the 3d engines the way that you are um, accessing these accessing these metaverses basically these are all experiences excuse me for a while <coughs> apologize for that still kind of like not fully fit <laughs> fully healthy since like three weeks already i'm gonna push through no worries uh that spatial computing basically just like the way you are interfacing with the metaverse per se so you can either use vr headsets you can use mobile you can use pc that's the whole idea it should be cross-platform and the idea is should be decentralized it should not be like owned by one entity or one company per se that it allows like everybody can access to it and without any restrictions per se um, you go deeper into that yeah i'm talking about the human interface itself like how you are communicating with them through gestures through voice through neural networks and whatnot and then finally the foundation of it is the infrastructure which is mainly 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 is the internet connection the 5g the wi-fi cloud um, connection so without that then the metaverse is, you won't have it because obviously it is an alternate world it is a real alternate reality where you go into that or you go in from you take it from there to here so either way works so it doesn't matter like either you are going full dive into the whole virtual metaverse or you are bringing information from the metaverse to the real world itself so all of this basically makes up the metaverse from from what we usually they don't um there's also like the current tech industry take on the metaverse itself like how they take or like what do they understand about the metaverse um the tech industry sees it like there's like you have feature sets that overlap with all the web services or real uh, world activities you have real-time 3d computer graphics and personalized avatars you have avatars obviously a variety of person-to-person -person social interactions that are less competitive and goal-oriented than stereotypical games. Uh, you have support for users creating their own virtual items and environments. You have links with outside economic systems so people can profit from virtual goods. So in whatever happens within the virtual world does not stay there. So you like the thing about like a lot of like online games and whatnot, you can trade, you can buy things, you can sell things, but a lot of those things just stay there. You do not convert that to real money. Um, but there are certain uh ex exceptions to that um, also they're like lastly is basically designs that seem well suited to virtual and augmented reality headset even if they only usually support other hardware hardware as well so the idea is should be like i said cross-platform that is kind of like the idea of the metaverse should be more or less so what is the current and the, uh, the state of the metaverse and what is what does the future hold for it so currently basically there are a lot of virtual worlds out there that claim to be metaverse metaverses per se you have the central land you have the horizons horizon world by meta you have spatial nemesis you have even like the the, the avatar creation ready player me so all of this is basically marketed as the metaverse um, different metaverses but it's uh, they're not connected to each other per se so ideally a true metaverse would be that all of this is linked together that you can go to decentral and you can go to spatial you can go to nemesis 
utilizing the same avatar all together. And that is what basically the Ready Player Me is trying to do as well. They're providing an avatar that can be applied to different, different uh, metaverses. But the truth to be told, like the actual metaverse that's already being around is beyond before that as well. Like Fortnite or even like Second Life. If you're familiar with Second Life, Second Life technically can be considered as like the first true um, metaverse, virtual 3D metaverse world where people are creating avatars, people are living their lives there, doing relationship, trade, commerce, which can transfer to real money. People actually make money from the Second Life business as well. So that has been around for, 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 for quite some time. And now Fortnite, Roblox, they... Why, why do they have to do with, with metaverses? Because you have you have a platform where people coming in to play games, play together, socialize, create avatar. They can buy, sell uh, items. They can basically use that utilizing real money to create trade items. They can create content as well. Just like Roblox, people can create their own content within there and have people to pay to try out their experiences. So that in itself is already a metaverse. World of Warcraft is basically like an old school meta MMORPG where people are already living all having all of this already there. So it has been around for quite some time. Um, it's just that now there's a common term for it. And it the the main thing is now like before is that before Usually these are only experiences by gamers per se because people who are being playing or are playing games are experiencing the metaverse uh, MMO social experiences. But now since like uh, linking with Facebook, Meta, and, uh, all these other experiences, they accommodate people outside the game, uh, the game, game, game universe per se. So you have business people, you have normal people, marketing people, people wants to go virtual concerts, People want to go to virtual con uh, conventions and whatnot. So not necessarily gamers per se. So they are now going into that. And they're trying to experience something that us gamers have been kind of like experiencing for quite some time, but just have a more common name to it. And then just having adding on towards that infrastructure. But it depends as well on how people understand metaverse. It depends on like how you would define metaverse there's like a few different different metaverse de de definition like for instance like if for some people they say if they're like there's this i found this on reddit per se like a metaverse alignment chart which is kind of funny but it's kind of true as well whereas like if the doctrine if you are your your metaverse understanding is pure doctrine basically metaverse must be accessed through vr and the metaverse must be a virtual social platform with interconnected areas to interact with people, then Horizon Worlds is a metaverse, only that. But if you are, your doctrine is correct, you still need to have VR, but the structure itself is not exactly have to be social platform, then Gorilla Tech is a metaverse technically. But if your structure radical, technically literally anything that involves other people within VR, then technically like the Beat Saber scoreboard is a metaverse. That is kind of true. And uh, you have the other way around as well. When you have like the structure purists, um, the social platform interconnected areas with with uh, to interact with other people, but they say uh, it just needs to be connected by a compute powerful computer. Then the VR chat is a metaverse already. If you don't care about the hardware, as, as long as you are accessing from the internet or electricity, then Reddit technically is a metaverse, or your Facebook is a metaverse, your Instagram is a metaverse. Even like there's others like. Walkie talkies technically is a metaverse if you say like metaverse needs electricity and it allows uh, interaction with other people. <laughs> technically, walkie talkie is a metaverse or is it like anything that involves other people or doctrine radical, then technically you're using taser on somebody is a metaverse. So that's kind of a joke, but yeah, kind of makes sense as well on the, 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 the other aspects of things. Take it like I mentioned, like people have been doing trades as well and whatnot. I've been playing this game called Path of Exile for quite some time, and I do trade as well. And these trade can occur real money that you are you are paying people real money for a cosmetic item that you can only use within Path of Exile. That has been going around with all of these other uh, 
metaverses the, the the experiences or like MMORPGs, but now you have crypto into it, uh, blockchain into it, so there's something more unique to it. So that can like enhances that. So why metaverse? You say no understand. We kind of like have a glimpse of it now. We have a kind of understand it's coming, but why? It, because it kind of like it provides immersive virtual worlds. It provides next level remote working, and you can enable people to experience the unachie un un unachievable, something that you cannot you cannot experience in real life. Then you have to go into the metaverse. You want to go into truly immerse yourself into a virtual world. Then you go into the metaverse. People are remote working, but instead of just like looking at your desk, looking at your phone. You're still in your home, but you want to experience something new. Then you go into the metaverse to work with other people. So that is basically more like why of it. Take it from like how this is based. This particular image that we just shared just now was taken from like uh, a venture, a venture capitalist by Alvin Fu. So he understands this is like why the metaverse concept is brilliant and ridiculous at the same time. So like I mentioned, there's a lot of cool things that you can do to it. But at the same time, there are certain things that uh, it's not there yet. Uh, it is kind of like ridiculous of like how people need to use VR or like people have to use crypto or like uh, what is NFT then? What is blockchain? A lot of people are not really understanding about that. Uh, what about ethics in the virtual world, virtual realms? Um, what constitutes as IP rights and whatnot? So there's a lot legal matters needs to be kept considered so there's a lot more to it and that brings us to the future now what is the future of metaverse technically if you are familiar with the idea of the internet back then in the 90s people have been talking in the same way i found this kind of like uh, already as well somebody had this to say this quickly like that <coughs> People have been talking about the metaverse the way they talk the internet based back in the early 90s. They say like some people are super hyped that it will change everything tomorrow. Some people think it's a fad, it'll never catch on. Some fear it'll cause people to shut in, never leave the house. And all the tech about how the tech isn't ready. And arguments about how it can't compete with the real world. Per se, that is technically what people have been talking about the internet and look where the internet is right now everybody is connected into the internet everybody is on the internet we are already in the internet right now <laughs> technically so who's to say basically like down the line metaverse is something that we are already in daily it's just that we don't <laughs> see it right now we don't have the technology as of yet to accommodate all that the infrastructure is not the area the understanding is not there, the legal matters is not there. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to say that the metaverse is already here. Um, but when it does, I see it basically to be, you know, it is kind of like inevitable. Like everything that we do, a lot of technology revolutions is going towards that as well. Take it from John Ricciatillo, uh, the CEO of Unity. He understands that. What is the definition of metaverse? It's the next generation of the internet. That's always real time. Uh, it's mostly 3D, mostly interactive, mostly social, mostly persistent. So it is kind of like the internet. It's, it's uh, just the difference is that you are immersed into it. You are literally immersed into it. You're not just like using something to interface with it. The, 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 it, is, it is basically part of uh, your life. And there are some other I uh, understanding uh, quotes from other different different like headshots out there saying that a universal virtual layer that everyone can experience on top of today's physical world or like they think the metaverse can take many forms but ultimately it's an audio visual experience basically that's basically how you communicate how you interact with it or like a piano bar where people's digital selves are gathering around but they're actually playing their pianos at home and jamming with others so that's basically it you are still at home, but you are connected with everybody else um, all over the world. And how Bill Gates said it, I, I predict most virtual meetings will move from 2D camera image grid, which I call the Hollywood Square models, to the metaverse, tree space with digital avatars. 
So these are just like some quotes by these people. I would like to leave you with this particular quote. As I mentioned, basically like the metaverse is not there yet. And he said 90% of what is considered impossible is in fact possible. The other 10% will become possible with the passage of time and technology. This is Hideo Kojima, the founder of Metal Gear Solid and Death Stranding. I really love this quote. Why? Because it kind of like, it makes sense. Like right now, people don't see it. Even like we, the creators themselves, they don't really see to the extent to it what the metaverse can be. But they understand this concept that like people can be connected anywhere. And then I can do things that make it easy for us. And in the end, I still see that all of these different, different like the XR, metaverse, spatial computing, everything has its place. Everything has its role. So like there are certain things you would use VR to be the best. There are certain things you would use AR to be the best. And there are certain things you need to be in the metaverse. And there are certain things you only need the internet. Some things you need social media. Some things you need something else, a forum or whatnot. Everything has its place, right? Right now, the way that we enjoy entertainment or media, there's a whole bunch of media entertainment um, platform out there. And it's all, every, books are still here. TVs are still here. Um, movies are still here. Music is still here. People are lis listening. So there's all these different, different experiences all in its place. You have tabletop games, you have card games. All of these basically has its own has its own place, and it's the same with metaverse. It's just not clear, not as clear as you would think right now, where the metaverse actually fits in everything, uh, every every day life, because it's not there yet. But one day, when we get there, when the technology is ready, when the the people is ready, everything is basically ready. Then. You, then people will see, then people will think about, oh, where has this been all this time? We actually need this all this time. So I think that's the end of the of, of my segment. And Jazakumullahu Khairan, I'd like to say thank you. That's this pictures of my two cats, Arya and Olil. Uh, if you want to follow me, find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram. You can also find our YouTube channel, Vortex XR Lab. Uh, I have my email there if you want to drop me a line or whatnot. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, we can move to question and answer, I guess, Charles? <laughs> yeah, nice one, Faisal. That's a fantastic informational um, uh, talk. Thank you so much. Um, now it's time for Q&A. So anyone, uh, any one of the participants here, um, would like to ask any questions, feel free to forward your questions now. Unmute yourself and, or you can also type the questions in the chat. Oh, there's one question here by uh, Dr. Lao Teck Chai. He says, thank you, Faisal, for the interesting talk. I have a question. Do you foresee the future, uh, hang on a second, I can see the entire question. The future of the, Future development of interconnected metaverse as in WWW. In your opinion, will we be able to see this in our lifetime? Next 10 to 30 years. <laughs> what do you think? I agree. I think hmm. I uh, I see it as that it is kind of like the interconnected. The idea of a metaverse, it that it should be interconnected. That whatever Facebook is working, whatever Apple is working, whatever anybody is working, that think of them as web pages. Everybody have websites. Everybody has their own websites, but it is, you have to go to the internet to access those websites. So everything is connected. So it is basically just as this, as the, the World Wide Web. And I feel that it is coming really soon. Uh, probably not even, probably less than 10 years because the technology is evolving very rapidly. Like everybody's moving very fast. 
especially since the pandemic, for some reason, which is weird, you know, like uh, people saying like businesses stops or uh, because of the pandemic, but because of the pandemic, people have been trying to figure out newer solutions quicker and faster and try to figure things out now because there is a demand for it. There is a need for it now. Um, and there is that uncertainty looming in the future that what if there's another wave, God forbid, what if there's another something like COVID, something that would restrict our movement, restrict our travels or like, who knows, right? So these things are more apparent now than ever. Before this, technology, yes, it's rap it is moving fast as well, but there was no per se an urgency of it as of yet because people they see like oh if why virtual tourism if i can still just like i just i can just fly there you know i can just fly to eiffel tower and just experience in it why should i buy a vr headset i just sit back but now when you have like when then back in the pandemic you cannot restrict you are restricted then you have to have vr to actually travel and then later on I see like those virtual tourism or whatnot that is more prevalent for those who cannot travel because maybe they have like physical disabilities or maybe the the place they want to go is not existing yet and anymore you know who knows like if you want to visit an ancient Rome uh, the Colosseum it's not there yet and if you want to go there then VR is your only option so like I said, everything has its place in uh, basically in within the whole larger scope of things. So I do see basically the development for Metaverse is already ongoing and is going to be as if like you are another web developer. You're just another... Now basically web developers, web page designer, graphic designers, UX designers, they work on the website, they work on mobile applications, they work on the internet. Later on, all of these basically will be working towards metaverse-related uh, purposes, experiences. You are 3D designers, you are UX artists, you are creating a stall, you're creating a store in the metaverse, you are creating hardware, you are creating stories for the metaverse. Because all of these different different platforms provide different different types of experiences. And like as artists, as storytellers as well, they would kind of like, use the medium as the message as well. So that brings a whole new thought process on how, what's kind of, what's the best type of experience you want to target within this kind of like platform. So yeah, there's a whole range of stuff that you can actually go into that and it's coming. I really foresee it within the next four, five to 10 years, we're going to see some substantial. Yeah. I'm really optimistic about that, like, to be honest. Thank you, Faisal, and thank you, Dr. Lau uh, Chai, for that question. Um, there's another question from Joanne Lim. Uh, here, it, she's, she's asking, what about security? Can my meta persona be hacked or stolen by another? True. I understand that, that concern. That has been always a concern since the internet as well. Um, like, it's the same question, like, what if my email has been hacked? What if my social media, my Facebook or Instagram can be hacked? Technically, Every lock has a lock picker, technically. So it's when people are developing these new concepts, these new platforms, obviously they have to work on the security as well. And what constitutes as security, what constitutes as privacy as well? Privacy is a big issue as well. Because like nowadays, like the Oculus, they have the VR headset. There were talks about like putting ads into VR. Uh, and then there were, ad there were talks about like, um, tracking your gaze and then using that data to sell you more ads. So that's a breach of privacy, right? So as these technology evolve, as the platform evolve, as more players get into it, more people are more aware of it, about it, then the developers of these hardware and these platforms will be more, um, they have to kind of like provide these safety measures for they, they, they want to make sure that the customers, the users are safe into it. Like VR, when it came out, um, like the VR chat per se, uh, is a VR environment where you socialize with people. But because the VR, when you are in it, it feels very immersive. 
So when you get close to other people, it really feels like somebody is really up your face. So it becomes like, oh, I feel very, uh, I'm, I'm being provoked or I'm, I, I'm being harassed or something like that. That is a real issue. And developers are actively working on these things or how to, how to prevent this, how to prevent you cannot teleport right in front of other people. You cannot um, say things you're not supposed to say in public. It's basically like you are in uh, MIRC or like public chat if you're way back then. Uh, if you say things that you're not supposed to say, a moderator would ban you. Right, right now, even on Facebook already, there's Twitter, there's bots actively finding uh, people, speeches, words that's, oh, this is not, uh, this this might lead, this content is sensitive or this might lead to harm so they would block you and whatnot youtube does that they really do aggressively hunt things that uh, you have swear words you do not we do not uh, monetize what you cannot monetize or like basically those things so these systems has to be going self at the same time with the development as well so it is a legit issue and then uh, people are aware of it uh, as and people are working towards that. And I think like antiviruses companies like Norton, Kaspersky, they are already working on something as well to kind of like prevent hackability, prevent uh, privacy issues, breach, data breach and whatnot. So it is basically there already. So hopefully we would be safer, ideally. Yeah, thanks Faisal. And thank you, Joanne, for that question. Um, just one last question. Um, because we're already uh, reaching towards the end of our session. Mm -hmm. So this question is, uh, I believe is uh, from Dr. Lau again. Uh, what is the state of, of XR or Metaverse in Malaysia in comparison to other countries? Um, to be honest, we are um, technically, I sh shouldn't say that we're kind of like left behind a bit, but we are a bit. Um, but not to say that we're not working on to it. There are certain companies, like I mentioned before, like MXR or EDT, they are working on metaverses. Um, there should be launching sometime this year or next year. Um, even XR, there are a few other companies that's working on XR. It's just that basically like the, um, there are certain companies that did not survive. I'm, 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 well aware of that i was a part of a company that closed their vr content development um, department down and i was forced to find another company because i was i was there i was that, that i was head i was leading that for the new department so i'm aware of other companies that did not make it uh the thing is that it's not just it's not um the the platform doesn't work it's the direction and the demand of it Malaysia, in its sense, um, is very is there is not in a stage where there is much demand for VR entertainment per se, but there are certain companies such as like architecture interior design companies that has been utilizing VR for quite some time. They have been using VR. There was I can't remember what was the company, but it, what I I did uh, when I was teaching in MMU, I had an intern who work with an interior uh, architecture company who were using a cave system VR uh, in their premises. And this is back in 2012 to 2013, if I'm not mistaken. And we know that the military even, they are utilizing VR. Uh, our military are actively utilizing VR to kind of like virtual virtualizing uh, transport cargo from one point to another. and. There are a few other things that's not being publicized to the public, but not to say there's a lot. There's a few. It can be. It can be more. Actually, to be honest, it can be more. It's just that um, it's about, about investment. It's about support. It's about the belief, uh, because like a lot of these companies uh, or like people trying to approach for grants and whatnot. They want to see like what's the ROI, what's the retention rate, how do I make sure that this can uh, get back money, what's your benchmark to it, and it's very hard for a lot of like people to kind of like convince that. But if you look at outside market, even like not very not very far, Singapore and Indonesia, they are actively utilizing VR in their oil and gas, 
XR in Singapore is really booming. They're like they, I can safely say they're like five years ahead from us. So, but not to say that we don't have a, a hand in that because like we, the, there are certain a lot of like the industry over there are powered by our people as well. So we have talent. We have the hands and minds to actually develop. Uh, the metaverse and cap- uh, spatial computing and XR, but they're not working it here. Most of them, some of them are working in Germany, some of them are working parts of Europe, some of them in Singapore, some of them in Indonesia. But we are getting that awareness, and first and foremost, we need stability in our our kind of like uh, business model and how the the economic. Uh, stability first and foremost so that people can see this is a good investment and this it it shouldn't be it shouldn't s- stay in a point where it's just something nice to have uh, it should be some to a point where it's we need it it is should be in a demand state that we would if you don't have this then you would you would literally be left behind or like whatever so it's something like that which basically it's getting there so that's safe to say that we're getting there more or less. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Faisal. And thank, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, this recording will be in, uh, we will put uh, a, a copy of this recording in our YouTube channel. And uh, there will be more uh, webinars like this in future. And some, many of, much of these webinars, upcoming webinars by Vortex XR Lab, will be about how do you get started? What's next? Um, that's, well, just wait and see. More coming from us. And thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you and everybody else. So do uh, watch this space. Take care, everyone, and have a good day. Have a great week ahead. Bye. Thank you, guys. See you. Can I now?